to do this again. Okay, praise the Lord and Shalom. <laughs> Welcome everyone to our uh, Minister's Foundation course. Um, Welcome to all our in-person students from all over India. It's a joy to have all of you here. And also our online students from all over um, the world and also from India. And um, uh, it's a joy to have um, and a blessing to have students from diverse backgrounds, you know, just representing every tongue, tribe, nation, uh, coming together in this manner just to study God's uh, word. Okay, uh, so in this uh, course, we will be studying three uh, APC publications. The first one we'll be studying is this book called Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. And our in-person students have received a copy of it. There is a Hindi version. So for those of you who struggle with English, especially our uh, in-person students, you can also, uh, you know, uh, study it in the Hindi version so you have a better understanding. Uh, for our online students, I have posted uh, uh, this PDF copy of this uh, publication on the stream page so you can access it. Um, and for our e-learning students as well, it's there in your um, course content uh, tab. You can just click on that and you can access um, this book. Now, in this course, we will be basically helping you, equipping you with the necessary tools or the necessary materials, uh, the insights that you need to know what is God's plan and purpose for your life, okay? God has a plan and a purpose for your life. We'll look at it in detail. We'll be studying that so you will be able to know how to find out God's will, God's plan, God's purpose for your life. And also, we will help you to build a strong and effective ministry, even as we look into receiving God's guidance and a code of uh, honor. Okay, so three books that we'll be studying. And I just invite all of you to engage in um, discussions, ask questions, um, share your um, you know experiences so that, um, just a minute. Yeah, share your experiences, you know, um, so that it will help us to learn from each other, you know, also will help you to uh, answer your doubts that you have. Uh, don't think your question is, is silly or stupid. You know, it's not. Uh, every question is important. You need answers. So please free, feel free to ask any question that you have. If you did not understand anything, please ask me and I will explain again. And I would, um, you know, uh, make it more clearer for all of us to um, understand. Okay, so even as we are a learning community, it would be nice if all of you can ask questions, share your experiences, this, uh, you know, engage in meaningful discussion, uh, so that we can all grow together in understanding and applying God's uh, word in our life. Okay. Um, now, the first book, as I said, we'll be studying is Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. Uh, just to give you a quick um, run through through this book, in the first chapter, we will be basically, um, you know, studying about which we are going to cover today. We will look at uh, the, the whole idea that God has a plan and a purpose for our life. Are you excited that God has a plan and a purpose for your life? Yes, God has not just created you and put you here on this earth, or He is not just, you know, you're not an accident. He has created you for a plan and a purpose. So that is what we'll be studying in chapter one. In chapter two, we're going to be talking about how to recognize God's plan and purpose for your life. How do we discover God's plan, God's purpose for our life in any given stages of our life or any given season or any given point in our life. You know, we all go through seasons and stages in our life. Yes, we will talk about that in chapter two, so you'll understand more clearly. And then we'll also cover nine different ways how we can recognize or how we can know what is God's plan for our lives. 
in nine different um, ways we will look at and how we can discover God's plan and purpose for our lives. In chapter three, we're going to talk about uh, an understanding about how, or we're going to receive an understanding of how God is going to prepare us, how God prepares us, you know, for what he has called us to do, how God is going to prepare us to fulfill his plan and purpose for our life. God does not just tell us, hey, this is my plan and purpose. Take it, go and do it. Try to figure it out yourself, how you're going to do it. No, he's not a God like that. He is a God who prepares us. God reveals his plan and purpose. He prepares us. He gets us ready. He gets you and me ready for what he wants us to do in life. And so in chapter three, we will be talking about the preparation process. In chapter four, we will talk about how we need to position ourselves right uh, to fulfill God's plan and purpose. So we need to be the right time, the right place, in the right uh, attitude, in the right character, the right mindset uh, to receive God's provision, to receive God's anointing, to receive God's blessing and to fulfill what he has planned and purpose for our uh, lives. So that is what we are going to be talking about in chapter four. In chapter five, we, talk, we will be talking about you know, God's calling is not something that is easy and simple. Of course, God gives us a skill. He helps us. He aids us. He strengthens us. He fills us in, uh, in our areas of our weaknesses. He strengthens us in those areas. But it's also something, it's a high call. It's a high price that we have to pay. It's not going to come easy for us. It's not going to say, we're not going to just say, okay, God, I'm here just... Give me a download of your plan and your purpose. Just, you know, give me all the skills. I'm here waiting. And then I'm going to just go and do it. No, it's it's it works like that in, you know, sometimes. But most of the times it, it requires us to, you know, work hard, do our part, you know, um, spend time, energy, equip ourselves. Uh, so it's a price that we have to pay to fulfill uh, God's purpose and plan for our life. So we're going to be talking about that in chapter five. And finally, in chapter six, we're going to talk about how, you know, God has given us a plan and purpose, how we can all start off very well, but how it's important for us to finish the race. It's important for us to finish the course okay it's important for us to finish the course so we're going to talk about how to finish the course successfully okay so even before we look at chapter one uh, i just mentioned briefly what we're going to look at in the six chapters before we look at chapter one i just want to encourage you by saying that you know each of you are not an accident waiting to happen okay uh, you've got a destiny, you've got a future, you've got places to go, you've got people to meet, you've got lives that you can touch, and you've got things to do. Okay, so God has a destiny for you, God has a future for you, God has places he wants you to go, he has people he wants you to meet, he's got lives that he wants you to touch, and he also has things that he wants you to to. Amen. Are you excited? Yes. So we must, you know, uh, catch on to what is God's dream, what is his plan and purpose for your life. There is no greater purpose than to live God's purpose for your life. Now, if you notice some of these things, what I'm saying is not in this publication, it's not in this book. So maybe you want to make a um, some course, um, you know, notes that you want for yourself, okay? Um, it will help, uh, so you can just take down, okay? There is no greater purpose than to live out God's purpose for your life. There is no greater satisfaction than to fulfill God's purpose for your life. There is no greater adventure than to walk according to God's purpose okay i'll repeat that again you know we need to catch on to god's dream for our lives there is no greater purpose than to live out god's purpose for our lives there is no greater satisfaction or happiness than you fulfilling god's plan and purpose for your life there's no greater adventure you know what's the meaning of adventure 
What's the meaning of adventure? It's like a journey. Okay, you're going to a new place for sightseeing. You're excited. It's an adventure. It's a journey, something that you're going to explore. Okay, so uh, there's no greater adventure than to walk according to his purpose. So you need to catch on to God's dream. You need to hold on to what's God's dream, plan, and purpose for your life. And like I said, it's not going to be easy. Okay. There are going to be some challenges. There are going to be difficulties. They are like, uh, sometimes the difficulties can be like a mountain that you have to climb. You know, there are some devils you have to fight. Some situations, difficulties, Satan's op uh, uh, oppression, opposition, people that will come in your way. And, uh, you know, but at the end of it, it's all going to be worth it because you are going to be fulfilling God's plan for your life okay so even as we go on this course and we learn about what is god's plan and discover what is god's plan and purpose for your life how to fulfill it how you receive god's guidance for your life how to be equipped to be an effective minister i want you to just enjoy this journey learn and also um, you know put into practice what we are learning okay this is not like history which you studied in school and college not geography this is not uh, you know um, like economics or social studies but this is something that is more practical so whatever you are hearing we want you to put it into practice so that you would know what is god's plan and purpose for your life and fulfill uh, that okay so before i go on uh, i'm going to be giving you a lot of extra notes and i want you to be writing it uh, because some of these will come in your um, assessments okay it's not just going to be from the textbook it's also going to be from uh, the you know the extra information or the extra notes that i'm giving to you so uh, I would appreciate it if you take down notes. And sometimes I'm going to, for, especially for the online students and the e-learning students, I'm just going to be a little slow because some of our students, in-person students, uh, you know, who come from uh, North India uh, struggle a little with the English. So maybe I'll have to give some simpler words. So please be um, patient, okay? Before we go on, we'll just pause for a word of prayer. We'll just uh, commit this whole course into God's hand and just ask God to lead us and guide us, okay? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to uh, learn from your word. Thank you that you have great plans and purposes for each one of us. You created us not by accident, God. None of us are an accident. You created us for a significant, for a purposeful plan that you have for us. And God, even as uh, you have that plan and purpose, we know it's not a mystery, but something that you want to reveal to us. And so we pray, God, even as we go about learning how to discern and know your plan and purpose for our lives, that you would open our hearts and minds, that God, you would um, help us to uh, listen and also to put into practice what, that, what we are learning so that we can discern and know your plan for our lives and walk in it and fulfill it, God. We thank you that even as you reveal it to us, you're a God who equips us and strengthens us. We thank you for each and every student. We bless them. And God, we commit this entire course into your hands. We pray that our journey of learning would be uh, effective and a powerful one. We thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so before we look into chapter one, I'm just going to establish a few important facts that will help us to understand that God has a purpose for each one of us. Okay. Now, there is something that we need to understand about God, that our God is a God of plan. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of design. He's a God of objectives or he's, you know, a God of objectivity. Okay. So what do, you, what do I mean when I say God is a God of plan, he's a God of purpose, he's a God of design or objectivity? What do I mean by that? Anyone? What do I mean when I say God is a God of plan, purpose, design? Okay. 
God of God of clarity. Okay. Uh, God knows what He is doing. He knows all that He is doing. Thank you, Gertrude. Yes, He knows what He is doing. Yes. How do we know that our God is a God of plan and purpose and design? Esther says He's organized and not random. Yes. Thank you, Esther. That's good. How do we know that our God is a God of plan, purpose, and design? How do we know? Very simple. We can see that. Because he has created the universe for us. And we yes. see the stars, the moon, the universe. Thank you, Ketrude. Yes, Nate and Esther as well. Creation. When you look at creation, right, there is order. Right? We have morning. We have afternoon we have dusk we have you know and we have night and then again the same pattern then we have different season which comes in the same pattern suddenly does god does not wake up and say hey you know uh, it's not rained in um, it's not raining in bangalore so i'll send snow no god does not do that or does not say hey you know it's been very cold in bangalore so i'm going to have summer now for them god does not work randomly but he's a god of plan design and purpose okay uh, you know uh, it, it it means that uh, yeah daniel daniel says it means god does not do anything accidentally yes okay god does not wake up in the morning he actually doesn't have to wake up but you know just in our context you know god doesn't wake up in the morning and say okay let me decide what to do today let me see which side i can raise uh, get the sun to rise up in the morning no he does not do that uh, you know god is not like that okay uh, he's a uh, god of plan purpose and design we can look at creation we can see that even when we look at our bodies we see that there is perfect plan order and design right suddenly your heart doesn't move from your left side to your top of your head right your eyes does not say hey i'm i'm tired of being in the same position i go right down to the feet right it does not do that there is order there is plan there is a design that god has um, uh, followed he does yes um, he does everything orderly yes let's look at scripture uh, what psalm chapter 33 verse 11 says Okay, one of you can read that. Psalm 33, verse 11. There is a mic for the in person students. Okay, Psalm 33, verse 11 says, The, uh, the counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. So, what does this verse say? That God has plans in his heart. Okay, some of us don't like to plan, right? We just like to do everything like this. Wake up in the morning, what do I do? You know, where do I go? Uh, okay, let me do this, let me do that. There is no plan and order. Some of us don't like to plan. But I've got some good news for you, that the God that we serve, the God that we worship has a plan. He's got a plan. He has plans in his heart, okay? Uh, Jennifer says, all his works, the Eden Garden, God's plan for redemption of human through Jesus. Yes, we even see God's plan of redemption, how he unfolds it, it right from creation, you know, how he brings about his plan of redemption, how he's continuing to work out his plan of redemption even today. Okay. Um, look at Acts chapter 15, verse 18. Did you call Abinas for uh, the mic for students? Oh. Yeah, so in person students, when you're reading, you can read from this mic, okay? So our online students can hear as well. So can somebody please read Acts chapter 15, verse 18, please? He who made these things known so long ago. Yes, so Acts 15, 18, thank you, Anusha, says, Known to God from eternity are all his works. What does it mean? It says God knows ahead of time what he is going to do. Okay. God knows even before he created the world, 
even before he you were born, God knew that in 2023, you will be part of APC Bible College. Okay. So he's got plans and he knows ahead of time, before time, what he, he is going to do. Look at Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. So can somebody please read? And if you want to read, please take the mic uh, in person, students. Isaiah Only I can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. Amen. Thank you, Anusha. There is a cue here. Let me just see what. Uh, Kalol Chowdhury has raised his hand. Yes. Do you have a question? Kalol Chowdhury? You've raised your hand. Okay, so Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 says, God declares the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying my counsel will stand, I will do all my pleasure. So God knows the end from the beginning, okay? God knows what is going to happen 10 years down the line 20 years down in your life you know he's he's already seen the end from the beginning okay he already knows your destination that means even before you start your journey even before you start traveling he knows where you are going to be he knows where you are going to get okay he knows when you will start your journey he knows when you will where you will be at different stages of your life he will also know when you are going to finish your journey okay that's the kind of god that we serve he knows everything about our lives he and uh, he has you know great plans and purposes so here we see through these scripture verses that god is a god of plan of purpose of design and of objectivities okay or objectives he's not a god who says let me see what i should do he does not work randomly he does not say, oh, Adam and Eve sinned. Okay, I didn't expect them to sin. I didn't expect them to disobey. Now, what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to remove sin? No, even before he created Adam and Eve, did he know that they're going to sin? Are you listening with me? Am I too yes, fast? Sir. Yes, sister. Okay. Even before God created Adam and Eve, did they know? did he know that he, they're going to sin? Yes, no? Yes, yes, sister. Yes, he knew that they are going to sin. So it was not something that he was shocked or he was taken aback. Okay. He knew that they were going to sin. So did he already have a plan of redemption? Did he already know how he's going to save the world? Yes, he already knows how he was going to save the world. So he already has everything in perspective, in plan, in purpose. So he does not work randomly. Okay. Uh, In-person students, are you able to understand? Some of you are looking very lost. Samaj mein hai sabko? Yes? No? Okay. Slowly? A little more slowly? Okay. Uh, he does not work by randomly means he does not work by chance okay let's take a chance let's see what will happen no god does not work like that okay and he does not even work arbitrarily that means he does not work randomly or by chance he's got a plan in place already so even if he you know he has a plan for your life that you have to study in apc bible college and suddenly you find it difficult and you say, I don't want to study in APC Bible College. I don't want to do anything with Bible College. I want to go and do what I want to do in life. Does God know that? Yes, he knows. Right? Is he going to stop you? No, he is going to speak to you. He is going to encourage you. He is going to strengthen you. But then he's finally going to let you make the choice. Okay? Just like Adam and Eve told them they should not be eating from that tree, but did God knows that did God knew that he's they're going to eat from the tree? Yes. Did he he could have stopped them? 
He just gave them the free will to choose. So God has given us the free will to choose, but yet he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Okay. Now, if you look at your books, uh, the textbook, it says that God has a specific plan for us and he has a master plan. So God has a master plan or another word for master plan is his eternal plan or his eternal purpose. And God also has a specific plan and purpose for our lives. So two things. God has a master plan or another word is an eternal plan and purpose. And the second thing is he has a specific plan for us. What do you think is God's master plan? What? Salvation, eternal life, good so God's master plan or his eternal plan is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is God's master plan, eternal plan. God also has a specific plan. What does that mean? Thank you, Lucy. Lucy says to save us. That's God's eternal or master plan. God also has a specific plan. What is the meaning of God has a specific plan? The word specific means something that is uh, more detailed, not general. It's general is like he wants all men to be saved. But specific is what? Esther says, customized plan for every individual. Well said. Thank you, Esther. That means God has a plan for each one of us. Even though God has a master plan that all of us are part of the master plan, that he wants all of us to be saved and all of you uh, in this class is, uh, you know, part of that master plan because you've made a choice to receive God's salvation and accept him as your Lord and Savior. But he also has specific plans for each one of us. What does that mean? God has specific plans for each one of us. Individual plans for each one of you. What does it mean? Unique plan, yes. Which means he wants some of you to be teachers, evangelists, missionaries, pastors, chefs, pilots. What else? <laughs> Doctors, engineers, bankers. You name it and all of that. Okay. So he's got specific plans for each one of us. Okay. But when we are fulfilling that specific plan, we're also fulfilling the master plan. Okay. Even as we go about fulfilling the specific plan for each one of us. So even if you're going to be a businessman or a businesswoman, even in that, you need to see how you can you know, share the gospel, minister to others. Even if you're a teacher, how you have the potential or you have the opportunity with so many children, so many young people, that even as you teach them some subjects, you can even share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. If you are a farmer, you have the potential or the opportunity to share with people in your village, in your town, with other farmers about Jesus Christ and lead them into salvation okay so the bible reveals to us in the new testament that god's master that god has a master plan but it reveals his eternal purpose let's look at ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 through verse 12 so can somebody please read ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 to verse 12 before that, Sanjay says, says, sorry, Anusha, before that, Sanjay says, we need to partner with God in the specific plan for us. Yes, we need to go partner with God in our specific plan and also for the uh, eternal plan and purpose or the master plan. Yes. Thank you, Sanjay. Yes, Anusha. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, we will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews 
who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Anusha. So here it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 through verse 12, it says, having as God is saying, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Okay, I'll explain this verse to us. So here this verse says that there is a good pleasure. Okay, There is something that God is really excited about. There is something that God is really happy about which he has purpose in himself. Okay, Which means that the plans and the purposes God has for us and for the entire world is something that he's really excited about. It's something that he's really happy about and that is something he has purpose in himself. It's not something that he had a board of directors meeting or he did not uh, have a committee meeting. He did not call the angelic advisory board. He did not call some angels, made a board and say, okay, let's discuss what can we have, what are the plans and purposes that we can have. Now we human beings, when we are part of something, we, you know, uh, an organization or a business or, you know, a church, we have a committee, right? Committee means a meet a group of people who meet together, who discuss and make decisions what best can work. But here it says that God has a good pleasure, something he's excited about his plans and purposes. And it's not something that he discussed or planned with anybody. It's something that he planned within himself. Okay. And he decided in himself. And he was pleased with what he has decided, what he has purposed. Okay. Then the verse says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth. So he says this plan that God has for us, you know, uh, uh, what is his plan is that his culmination of all times Okay, it's a culmination of everything that he's going to do. And what is he going to do? So what is God's plan? What is this great dispensation of the fullness of time? Is he's going to gather people together, all those who are in heaven and those who are on earth. He's going to gather all of us together. Okay, look at what verse 11 says. He says, in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him. Okay. So it says according to the purpose of him or according to his purpose. So God has a purpose and he has predestined us according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who trusted in Christ Jesus should be for the praise of his glory. Okay. So here this verse, God says God has a plan and a purpose. It's something that he has planned in himself. And what is that plan and purpose that he has is that he might gather all in heaven and earth, all who believe in him, in him or together in himself. Okay. And he says that here in verse 11, he says, according to the, his purpose, having predestined all according to the purpose of him. That means even before we made a choice to for salvation or even before we chose Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God knew even before we were the creation of the world that we are going to choose him and he is going to work all things in us, okay, according to his will, according to his plan and purpose, so that we can fulfill his plan, his purpose, and he can receive all the praise and the glory. Okay? Yes, it's Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 through verse 12. Is that not the right verse? Yes, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 to 12. 
It's on page one of the new book. We'll have new books or old books? New books, so it's on page uh, one of uh, chapter one. Is there any doubt about this? Uh, is it okay? Nisha and Shekhar and Sanjay. Oh, you wanted me to repeat the reference. Yes, it's Ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 to 12. Okay. Any doubts so far? Any questions? So here in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 to 12, uh, 11, uh, and also 12, we see in verse 9 and 11, it specifically says that God has a purpose, okay? And the purpose is what something that he has purpose in himself, okay? Look at what Ephesians chapter 3 verse 11 says. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 11. So can somebody please read Ephesians chapter 3 verse 11 loudly? Yes, go ahead. Is it on? Okay. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. So here this verse says, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God has an eternal plan or a purpose. Okay. The master plan which I said, another word is eternal plan and purpose. Okay. Which he is executing which means which he is bringing about all these past years which he's finishing which he's completing which he is fulfilling and which he is continuing to fulfill and complete okay so the master plan that god has is a plan of salvation for all mankind is something that he is already you know being com is completed it's something that he's also completing and fulfilling here now in the present. Okay. So, what is God's eternal plan or purpose? He read in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 to 12. What is God's eternal plan and purpose? Salvation. But in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 to 12, what is God's eternal plan and purpose? To gather people, those in heaven and those in earth, in Christ Jesus. Okay, What does it mean to gather all people in heaven and earth in Christ Jesus? It basically means that all who accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior become part of the kingdom of God, become part of the family of God, become sons and daughters of God. We become heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Okay. So that is what we saw in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 to 12. Now let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. Uh, what does Paul say? How does Paul put put, put it? Okay. If we, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 to 4. Can somebody read that please? For this is good, acceptable in sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved, and to come to the knowledge of him. Amen. So Paul is writing to Timothy and he's saying, what is God's good, acceptable, uh, uh, what is good and acceptable in the sight of God? What is good and acceptable in the sight of God? That all that he desires that all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So what's God's desire for mankind? What God's desire for mankind? To be saved. Yes, to be saved. He, it says here to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay. So this is God's master plan. This is God's eternal purpose that he wants everyone to be uh, saved. He wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth. And he wants to gather them together in Christ. And is God uh, fulfilling his master plan on earth? Yes, he is. Has he fulfilled it in the past? Yes. Okay. Will he fulfill it in the future? Yes. Okay. Um, then we see that God not only has a master plan or an eternal plan and purpose,
but he also has a specific plan for each and every one of us that he has created. So he has individual plans and purposes for our lives. Amen? So just tell your neighbor, hey, God has great plans and purposes for your life. Are you telling your neighbor? You need to say, you tell your neighbor, wake up, wake up, and you know, God has great plans and purpose for your life. Okay, let's look at Psalm 139, verse 16. Psalm 139, verse 16. Uh, in person, uh, sorry, um, online students, can you hear the in person students when they are reading the scripture passage? No, sister. No. That mic is not on. Okay, thank you. Get rude. Not much. You have to increase the volume, please. Yeah. Okay, let's look at Psalm 139, verse 16. And I can ask one of the in person students, can, uh, sorry, the online students, can you please read Psalm 139, verse 16? Your high saw my substance, being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Amen. Here, it, what does this verse say? It's such a beautiful verse. You want to check the mic? Okay. It says that even before, you know, we were formed, you know, God saw us, you know, how we would be, okay? Even before we took our very first breath, even before the first day in our lives, the first hour, everything about us was written in the book, you know, and God fashioned everything for us even before we began to live our life. So it says, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they were all written the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Can someone else read what the Message Bible says? Message Bible, can any other student... Um, Online student can read, please. Message Bible, what it says. Psalm 139, verse 16. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I had even lived one day. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? You know, it says that even before... Uh, we lived out even one day of our life and even a one minute, God had everything before him. He sees our life from the start to the finish, from the beginning to the end. All the stages of our life, everything that we go through is there spread out before God. So nothing uh, goes unnoticed by him. There's nothing that he does not know. So maybe sometimes when we go through difficult situations and circumstances in our life, you know, when we don't hear from God, we think God does not know. He does not understand. He does not see what we are going through. He does not feel what we are going through. But that's not true. That's the lie of the enemy. But what does God's word says? He says, you know, everything, our whole life is spread out before him. All the days of our life, even before we lived out, even one day, everything is known to him. He knows everything about uh, so every stage of our life has already be, uh, been prepared, been planned, even before we lived out even one day of our lives. Isn't that amazing to know that we have a God who is so intimately connected with us, uh, who desires so much about our lives to to, he, he's so much uh, connected with our lives. He's not somebody who just created us, created this world, put us here and left us to live life on our own. But he's just so intimately connected with every aspect, every stage, every detail of our life. So all the days of your life, all the days of my life were written in heaven even before I took my very first breath. See? Your very first breath, even before that, you know, all the days of your life, all the days of my life were written in heaven, even before we took our first breath. And God has a blueprint for your life. You know what's a mean, your blueprint? What's a blueprint? It's a map, okay? It's a model. 
planning, yes, you know, especially when you're going to build a house or a building, you know, the architect will give you a, a sheet, it's called a blueprint, where will be the doors, the windows, the rooms, uh, you know, everything will be mentioned so specifically. So what you need to do is just take that from the designer or the architect and you give it to the builder and he sees everything and he will build it according to what has been plan so god has a blueprint for your life he has a dream for your life isn't that exciting to know that this great big god who's so awesome so mighty he's omnipotent he's all powerful omniscient who knows everything uh, a god is omnipresent present everywhere and the word of god says no man has ever seen god because he lives in unapproachable light even though he's so amazing so awesome so glorious but yet he has a plan and a purpose and a dream for your life at least for that can you all give me a smile because all of you are looking so serious and so sleepy and so lost okay just be excited tell your neighbor hey god has a dream for your life yeah no god has a plan and a purpose and a dream for your um, life. So even before you took your first breath of air on the earth, God has a dream for you and he's created you for a plan and a purpose. Sometimes we think we're useless, we're good for nothing, we're hopeless, we're a failure. That is why I couldn't land up anywhere. I landed up in a Bible college. Did you ever think like that? No, you know, don't ever think like that. Okay, you're not an accident. You're not hopeless. God has created you for a plan and purpose. Amen? Okay, let's go for our break and we'll meet after the break.